Just before Christmas 2023, I was one of the many people that ran out and purchased the brand new full-sized Bamboo A1. Well, actually I helped a close friend get one, but I did get to put it together and I got to put it through its paces and I got to use it quite a few times. And as an A1 Mini owner who absolutely loves my A1 Mini, I really wasn't surprised that the full-size A1 it's an incredible machine. Well, fast forward a few months, and I think it's safe to say that probably every single 3D printer owner in the entire world is aware of what happened in February with the Bamboo A1 printer. We don't talk about the recall. No, 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 no. I think what really made the recall kind of bad was all the videos and blogs and posts trolling us all and claiming things like how every single A1 was going to burn down your house or something along those lines. Well, the truth was actually a lot more tame than that, and it didn't really take a lot of digging to find out what was going on. According to Bamboo's website, the problem actually only affected less than 0.1% of machines that had the issue with the power cord. And that's not 1%, that's 0.1%, making it about 1 in 1,000 machines. And that's less than the chance of being in a fatal car crash on any given day. Yeah, I looked it up. <coughs> Nerd alert! Well, no, knowing the percentages doesn't make the problem any better, especially for those that it affected. It shouldn't really have happened at all. But realistically, we all know mistakes get made. I do find it refreshing that Bamboo took it upon themselves to buy back every single machine, no matter where it was sold, for any reason if you were worried in any way. And for everyone else, well, they put out fixes and even offered to replace the electrical systems, which includes the heat bed and more. Well, if you want to see it straight from Bamboo, I'll have the link to their website in the description below. So that brings us to now. With the recall gone, the A1's back in stock everywhere. And I've been seriously considering getting one of these A1's. I think it's really past time that I get rid of some of my older machines mainly due to constant problems and slow speeds. So replacing them with a faster machine that prints great nearly every single time, well, that just makes sense. Before I could do that, though, one of the guys at Bamboo that I've talked to in the past, he reached out to me, excited about this new channel, and wanted to know if I wanted to give the A1 a try. <laughs> Just because they sent it to me, never fear, I double-checked. I was told, again, that they've never asked a reviewer to say or include anything in a review, and, well, that's the only way I would do this anyway. The A1 has an extremely nice build plate area of 256 millimeters cubed, and being a Cartesian printer, or bed slinger if you will, a great number of printers in this class are a good bit smaller, usually around 220 millimeters cubed. All new A1s on the market do have the upgraded heat bed cable, which fixes the cause for the recall. And this new cable goes all out, with Kevlar reinforcement, thicker insulation, extra built-in strain relief, and a lot more. I know that the PEI build plates aren't the favorite of a lot of people, but the textured PEI build plate that comes with the A1, I really like it. Very similar to what I have on my A1 Mini. I also want to eventually get those high temp smooth plate. Considering that the build area can get up to 100 degrees Celsius and the stainless steel hot end can hit 300 degrees Celsius, well, having those different build plates could be a big difference in getting a great first layer depending on the type of filament you use. And according to Bamboo, the A1 can print PLA, PETG, TPU, and PVA. Supposedly, and they don't recommend it though, it could also handle ABS, ASA, PC, PA, PET, and even carbon glass fiber. But I'm not real sure how realistic anything but PLA and maybe PETG is though, considering you really need an enclosure to maintain those constant ambient temps. Just like other bamboo models, the A1 has active flow rate compensation. This is supposed to monitor the flow of your filament to just make sure it's not pushing out too much or too little based on the speed of your print. Along those lines though, that for me, the probably the biggest feature of all bamboo printers is the full auto calibration. Z offset, bed leveling, vibration compensation, nozzle pressure, just so many things that we actually used to have to do by hand. One other thing that has continued to impress me with bamboo is the ability to quick swap those nozzles. 
no more heating it up to temp, dealing with different sizes of nozzles on different machines, using those dumb little wrenches that barely fit. Yeah, I'm over all of that. Now, I know that compared to the price of those cheap brass nozzles, well, the bamboo nozzles are really kind of pricey. 10 to 15 bucks is way more expensive than a quarter, but for a hardened or stainless steel hot end and nozzle, that'll last a lot longer than that brass one. Well, it's really worth it. As we all know, one of the main reasons, if not the biggest reason for getting a bamboo is the ability to print in color. It's possibly the biggest negative also considering all that waste. But I think we can all say that printing with four colors or more, that's just plain cool. Oh yeah, that's cool. Isn't that cool, guys? And those four colors come courtesy of the AMS light. Unlike the X1 or P1 machines, the AMS light can't be added onto. So the ability to print with four colors is all we'll ever have with the A1 printers. But it doesn't make them any less incredible. The AMS light is really a marvel of engineering. Well, print quality is exactly what I expected. My first print, Benchy, of course. Printed a number of other things and debated printing some of the testing models out there, but everybody does that. What I don't see a lot of, for testing at least, are print and place dragons and fidgets and things that are more real world. You know, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm still amazed by a lot of the awesome 3D prints out there, and to actually print them and then hold them in my hand, well, sometimes it's just like magic. Gears, fidgets, print and place models, they all just lift right off the build plate and work. With other machines, it would take at least a couple test prints before I got one that didn't break when I tried to move it. And by the way, I'm going to have links in the description to everything I show in the video, so if you see something you like, go for it. Since nothing in this world is perfect, we know the A1, just like any 3D printer, is going to have a few issues. And aside from that sometimes crazy amount of filament waste, there's one other thing that's really kind of bugging me. The camera. With the A1 Mini, never really had a major issue with the camera, and from what I can tell, the A1 has the exact same camera, so no problems, right? Well. Straight out of the box, the camera was completely blank, both on the computer and in the app. And since I was in the middle of my first print, the Benchy, I couldn't just turn it off and turn it back on. Once the print finished, I got this one second clip and that's it. I did a power cycle and things did start working, but still not great. A quick online search found that this is actually a very widespread problem. And that A1 I helped get my friend at Christmas time, well, he still has issue with the camera on just about every single print. Oh, that's not good. Well, my personal preference of setting up the A1 and the Mini is to turn it sideways. I leave the AMS light right where it is. It'll now be behind the printer though, instead of beside it. I feel like that kind of gives me a little more room, especially dealing with those filament rolls, getting them on and off the AMS light. And other than the Benchy, the very next thing I printed was this poop deflector. I found it for the A1 Mini a while back and it's perfect for the A1. Now instead of shooting the waste across the room, it just falls straight down. And right below that is this nice looking purge management system. I really like the way it wraps around the Z-beam and puts it in the perfect position to catch all that waste. Another favorite add-on that I also did on the A1 Mini are these AMS light number covers. There's a hole in each one for your feed tubes and a hole that lets the light shine through as well. Well, for the printer alone by itself, you're going to spend $399 to get the A1, which is pretty much kind of average for a bed slinger of this size and speed and quality. If you decide to pick up the AMS light later, you're going to drop about $250. But if there's even a thought when you're getting your A1 that you might want to do that, you'd get a much better deal just getting the combo at $559 and put that extra $90 towards some filament. Regardless of what you decide, I really like the A1. It's a great complement to the A1 Mini and it lets me print larger models and still have that same quality and speed I need and expect. Here's the thing though, who is this Bamboo A1 printer for? I'm already on record as saying I think the A1 Mini is the best beginner 3D printer. So where does that put the A1? I think it's actually pretty much in the same spot. Yeah, it costs a little more, but if you really want a full-size printer, something bigger, well, then it's the best thing going. And yeah, there's other printers that have calibration and get great prints, but 
do they have that multicolor option? Now, I know you're all going to have your opinions, so you know, let us know in the comments. And if you have some awesome add-ons, drop those links in the comments as well. Let's help each other out, and let's have a great time as we all learn, create, and amaze.